Hello everyone, we will just wait one minute more and then we'll start our uh, talk. चेस्टा कर अच्छा कौन था तो बोली है देवी ना बुझते वालों ने हाँ सुंदर अच्छे हो गए हाँ हाँ अरे वो अमित एक पीली जगह में ज्वाइन कोड़े चित्र और नामात्र की फॉर्मूला ओके ओके ठीक है हम्म 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 Shomar is kindly please share the YouTube link because we are full. We have now hundred people here, so we'll start the webinar and uh, please see for the YouTube uh, live streaming. I mean, teachers, you have already shared for it. Okay, so please share here because uh, we have other participants also, and I will just quickly share this link um, via email. Okay. Okay, sure, sure. So we'll start now.
good afternoon to all of you and a very good morning to our speaker it's uh, 8 am in the uk now so good morning anurag uh, respected teacher in charge professor dev prashad mondol our iqc coordinator professor ranjini guho today's speaker dr anurag roy faculty members of our college and other institutions researchers and my dear students on behalf of department of chemistry gomun sachin mandal mahavidyalay it is my honor to welcome you all in today's international webinar on advancement in solar energy research and opportunities of higher education in uk we have chosen this topic mostly for two reasons first one is by listening this talk the students could find a suitable theme or they may take inspiration for their dissertation from this as this field is a highly emerging one and has huge potential to change the future second reason lies in the fact that material science is not only physics not only chemistry not only engineering or only biology it is the combination of all of them so at this stage it is good for the students to develop a broad perspective and they should get the idea that a research topic should not necessarily be confined into one particular branch today we come together to celebrate the progress that has been made in harnessing the power of the sun for a cleaner and more sustainable future the innovations in solar energy research have been truly revolutionary transforming the way we generate and use electricity researchers around the world have been working to increase the efficiency of solar panels improve energy storage solutions and make solar power more available and affordable for all these developments are transforming the energy scenario and reducing our dependence on fossil fuels the development of new materials and technologies has driven us into a new era of solar energy where possibilities seem endless now we are going to see some of these exciting advancements which are happening around the world i am sure that this interdisciplinary session is going to be very enjoyable and helpful to each one of us i look forward to engaging with you in all insightful discussions as we explore this exciting frontier of solar energy research along with the speaker thank you for being a part of this important conversation before commencing the technical session i would like to express my gratitude to mr joydev haldar president of governing body of our college for helping us in every aspect i heartily thank our respected tic professor debo prashad mondol for encouraging us always now i would like to request professor mondol to inaugurate the session over to you sir welcome everyone ladies and gentlemen esteemed faculty members and fellow students it is a pleasure to gather here today for our online international webinar on the topic advancement in solar energy research today a renowned academician is present among us from distant united kingdom in this beautiful discussion dr anurag rai epsrc research fellow solar energy research group university of etc united kingdom on behalf of our mahavidyalaya to extend of our warmest congratulations to you for attending this great event today we look forward to hearing you and your valuable input on this important topics thank you for being with us thank for our gb president sri joydev haldar who always support and motivate us in all these events our congratulations to dr devina jana convener of this meeting and head department of chemistry and all her faculty members by whose efforts such a great webinar 
is being organized to do. And also my respect and love to all my colleagues, teaching and non-teaching staff and students who have attended today in this webinar. In this world, solar energy research has seen significant advancement in recent years. Solar energy is an important topic in present. We need to use more solar energy in the future to balance our environment and reduce electricity consumption. So today's discussion is very relevant and important to all. I wish today's program success and again congratulations and best wishes to all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. Now, may I request uh, Ronjini Goha, ma'am, our IQSC coordinator, to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Jana. On behalf of the Internal Quality Assurance Cell, Bohmon Chochin Mondal Mohabit Daloy, I extend a warm welcome to the esteemed speaker of today's webinar, international webinar, Dr. Anurag Roy from University of Exeter. My congratulations also to the Department of Chemistry for organizing this webinar on a very topical issue, advancements in solar energy research and higher study opportunities in UK. Such international webinars are particularly important for colleges like us, which are located in rural remote areas, by which students are given an exposure to worldwide research to whatever is happening. And we at GMSM College are trying our best to implement one of the most important aspects of the national education policy introduced, that is learning in a blended mode. Such an international webinar is the best example of uh, doing such uh, hybrid learning. Solar energy has recently experienced uh, massive growth as a result of both technological advancements that has reduced costs as well as government policies uh, that support renewable energy resources. We are eager to hear about the recent researches towards more efficient and more uh, cheaper use of uh, solar energy. Uh, and as for the education and opportunities in UK, uh, this is very interesting, particularly for the faculties joining from across the state and maybe uh, from the country also, because this will give us an uh, information about the various scholarships available, which we do not know. Many of them are available about the various travel grants, which are available to our faculties and also to the various universities which support third world countries, academicians from third world countries. I think this will be uh, open the doors uh, to future research possibilities for our faculty as well as faculty from other colleges. I also uh, welcome all the other participants. I can see a lot of other participants from other uh, universities and colleges to this webinar. And my heartfelt gratitude to our uh, governing body president, Sri Joyadeh Bhaldar, who always gives us a free hand in organizing such uh, uh, international webinars. And also to our respected teacher in charge, Professor Dev Prashad Mondol, for taking time out from a very busy year-ending schedule uh, for attending, for organizing and attending this webinar. And also to my dear students, please listen to whatever is happening, uh, whatever is being told today. This may be uh, important for your internship, for your research, and for many other possibilities later in your life. And I wish the seminar a success. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Devrina, uh, for giving me an opportunity to introduce our uh, today's speaker. Uh, so, our uh, respected TIC sir and Ranjini madam also has introduced him. So, uh, I would like to say only a few words about this uh, today's topic. It is on uh, solar, and uh, we see that the uh, whole world is moving towards this energy. And new, not this is not new energy. So this is like uh, this is frontier we have not explored because of these environmental issues and global concern. Uh, global concern. So everybody is uh, moving towards this direction to make this world is better place because of the global warming and all other 
uh, fluid energy. So the solar energy is uh, one kind of replacement to them, though there is uh, some limitation about uh, this uh, uh, abundant energy uh, to uh, convert this energy into the electrical and available energy for our daily life. So I would uh, I I would like to see in this uh, talk how he is. Uh, explore all those things and give us a new aspect of this uh, new research thing. Thank you, Devina, for uh, giving me opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Amit. So with this introduction, I would like to start our technical session. I have the privilege to introduce our today's speaker. Uh, Dr. Umura Roy is an EPSRC research fellow in the Solar Energy Research Group at the University of Exeter, UK. Anura completed his PhD under the DS, uh, DST Inspire Fellowship from CSIR Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute, Kolkata, in 2019, and earned his master's degree from the Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad, in 2013. He is a materials chemist focusing on the development of smart materials for solar energy harvesting and solar thermal control. Onurag has published 78 research articles, accumulating over 1,700 citations. He has received various research grants, including the DST Inspire Fellowship, Agritech Cornwall EU Fund, British Council Research Exchange Fund, and GW4 UK. Onurag is a member of the Royal Society of Chemistry, American Chemical Society, and a registered scientist with the UK Science Council. He is also a fellow of the Indian Chemical Society and the Indian Photobiological Society. Before pursuing his PhD, Onurak worked at Turtle Steel Jamshedpur Research and Development for eight months. With this, I would like to invite our speaker, Dr. Onurak Roy. Over to you, Onurak. Uh, am I audible, first of all? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Debrina and others, profess respected professor, for inviting me to this exciting session. And very good morning to everyone from UK. Uh, it's very early morning here, it's just eight o'clock. Uh, so you can see me, probably my hairs are a bit uh, 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 scattered. Anyway, so. Uh, I'm Anurag. Uh, uh, I'm as you know. Uh, I'm working as a research fellow, working on various aspects of solar energy materials. And today, I'm going to uh, uh, share a few uh, recent strategy and advancement to what the research is leading in future. Uh, so hopefully, you will enjoy it. And if you have any questions, just ask me. So I'm going to share my screen now. I'm very weak in Google Meet, so <laughs> excuse me for that. But hopefully. Hopefully, I can manage. Uh, yep. Is it visible? Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, I mean the slides, right? No, not the slides. We can see the actually that uh, Google, all the people that you have joined there. Oh, just that's what... Yeah. So it should be entire screen, right? Oh, Now, uh, now can you see? Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. The the slides, right? Yeah, because I can't see you. <laughs> Yes, everything is fine. Go ahead. Please. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So, uh, 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 again, welcome uh, to this exciting talk. Uh, hopefully, you will like it. So, today I'm going to talk about the uh, advancement in solar energy research. Uh, as uh, uh, the professors are already mentioned about that, uh, solar energy is a kind of a pivotal uh, uh, energy technology in today's where we have struggled with the climate change and you know uh, want to reduce the fossil fuels dependency where the solar energy can be a leader uh, among the other renewable sector. But uh, apart from the photovoltaics, there are other uh, uh, interesting uh, research also uh, can be implemented through the solar energy. It may be harvesting or it may be uh, with uh, utilizing the sunlight uh, to a maximum extent to 
to to our daily life uh, in a science and technological way. So I can uh, try to give you that flavor that what are the regions, what are the interdisciplinary subjects that you can uh, intake through the solar energy research advancement. Uh, so with this, uh, uh, those who are not uh, uh, aware uh, about the University of Exeter, where we are working currently, uh, it's in the southwest of the UK, uh, in the part of the England, uh, you can, I can take a laser. Yeah, uh, so it's it, it's here. So I based on here in the Falmouth in the Penryn campus, our engineering uh, department based on here. So this is the main campus, which is in Exeter. This is our building where currently I am seated, uh, which is the Penryn campus. And just uh, a few quick information about our university. It is uh, a 143 ranked in uh, Times Higher Education uh, worldwide. Uh, 163, uh, according to the QS World University ranking, uh, we are sixth in the UK, ninth in the Europe, and 29th in the world, according to the CWTS Leiden ranking. These are the few uh, different uh, ranking uh, systems that uh, all the students can check and verify about any university uh, in the world. Um, and uh, Exeter also uh, positions 15th uh, out of 121 higher education institute. And we are also one of the proud institute uh, the university in the world who is working on all the 17 sustainable development goals uh, principles work, uh, set by the United Nations. Uh, and here I'm working, which is the Renewable Energy Department, and under the Renewable Solar Energy is one of the leading departments. So if you just visit the website, you can see, uh, get all the details about our uh, current research uh, advancement technologies and related reports, uh, the facilities that we can offer, and about the courses as well. So again, <laughs> so this is me. You can see me uh, uh, here, and uh, 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 as uh, the the as as mentioned that I'm I'm one of the uh, uh, material chemist who is working on variety of materials for the solar energy research harvesting. I'm so, uh, so I'm an EPSRC fellow. Uh, I started my journey with the UK in the industrial impact fellow uh, uh, in AgriTech Cornwall project in 2019-2021. Uh, so I was working with the Agri photovoltaics that how we can introduce a, a passive cooling system uh, for the uh, agriculture and the dairy industry that I will discuss a bit more later. Uh, next, uh, uh, as I, I join as EPSRC fellow from 2021, and it's up to the tw end of this year. Uh, I did my PhD from CSR, CDCRI, Kolkata in 2019, then master's uh, 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 before that, I completed my master's in chemistry in the School of Mines, Dhanbad, uh, and my bachelor was in chemistry honors from Calcutta University in 2011. So what I introduced usually to my British English speaker or European people that I belong to a city where the uh, six Nobel laureates uh, are directly connected. And I'm proud to say that, that uh, it's the only city in the world where uh, the all six uh, or all the five Nobel laureates uh, from a single city from different Nobel categories, not a single one. So all, whatever the Nobels currently uh, are given. So uh, Kolkata is, uh, I think, the only city where the different people uh, have engaged at different categories of novels. So I'm, I'm very feel proud and I always introduce myself like this way. So I'm from here and now I live in here. It's almost been six years now in the UK. So yeah. So if you know about my uh, more details, I'm available on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere in the social media, Google Scholar. So please uh, 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 chat with me, a link right there. Okay, so uh, what's so serious about uh, our today's discussion? So that has to be uh, disclosed. So first of all, uh, as uh, we are talking about energy, we are talking about uh, uh, a climate change and all those stuff. So why it's, it 
it's it's really uh, in in current generation in current scenario is important to think it it's because the first of all the limitation so what's the limitation the limitation of our non renewable energy sources or the the popular traditional energy sources what we are using uh, it's mostly uh, uh, from the petroleum and coal which are quite limited nothing new to us but uh, it's very Uh, serious about that according to the current demand uh, they will be finished in next few decades so probably in next 50 60 years or hardly 100 years we can uh, 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 easily lose all those petrols and coals uh, because of our high energy demands so here we need something to think about an alternative things next is the environment pollution which which is a which has a serious impact of uh, this uh, climate change so uh, this is due to use of petroleum energy sources loads of you know uh, environment concerns uh, through the pollutions air pollution dust pollutions uh, so we need to uh, think about how we can mitigate those pollution um, as soon as possible for better future obviously uh, if there is environment there is so resources there should be something related to business and which is directly hit on the price increment uh, the inflations so prices of energy sources can be increases suddenly so there is a no guarantee or no warranty or no uh, you know uh, of uh, any commitment that it should be always low uh, so and uh, i i mean uh, if some government or somebody is giving you a free energy it's not at all a free energy rather than it can cause more environmental pollution or more uh, you know um, um, uh, increments your taxes and all these things uh, indirectly in other sense anyway so it directly affects to the economy of a country it may cause a less supply of fuel to country and that country will face uh, so many problems to lack of energy so uh, yes energy bills is a concern uh, especially to the european countries the western countries where we need more uh, we need heater environment more heat because of the cold uh, currently my temperature here is 5 degrees celsius and it's raining thoroughly Uh, so you you can imagine that how much uh, heat is required to keep you warm uh, inside a building or inside a bus inside a train whatever uh, the the sources we are using so energy bills is a big concern and we need to deal with that uh just a current scenario that uh, what are the world electricity generation is at this moment so from coal we are getting 38% of energy this is worldwide uh from gas uh, 23.2 uh and from oil is 3% nuclear 10.2% hydro is uh, quite interesting it's 15.8% uh, approximately uh, others 0.6 and non hydro renewables which includes solar as well 9.3 now at this scenario where we lead that's the very uh, important to ask uh, ourselves so the renewable energy is often displaces conventional fuel in four areas usually we replace renewable energy for electricity generation hot water or space heating transportation and off grid energy services especially for the rural uh, sites uh, where the uh, on grid systems cannot be uh, you know uh, flexibly done so uh, the renewable energy is expected to make up of the 30% of world's energy by 2024 but still we are lag behind uh, due to various reasons uh, but uh, it's driven by but in the renewable sector remember the uh, the most leading to uh, energy is solar and wind uh, the offshore energy wind energy or the solar energy is uh, taking uh, the 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 advantage of it it's just because of uh, first of all it's free uh to to get this energy we get a natural resources it's free of cost we don't need to pay for the resources availability and and next is uh, the resources doesn't uh, you know cause any direct impact or this is good for our environment we need wind we need sun we need light and that is naturally coming so let's utilize it so that's the motivation that that we can generate some energy out of it 
So uh, if you're thinking about the sustainable solution uh, we deal with this renewable system, so uh, there is a few uh, rational use of energy structure, uh, which is, you can see here, uh, denoted by A, B, C. Uh, so uh, what, what is A? So the A is the developing uh, renewable energy. The B is the energy efficiency improvements, conservations, and the management. And the C is the practicing the energy modesty. So these three can, uh, you know, work together. So we uh, what we call in science is the uh, synchronizations or the synergistic effect of the ABC that can give you ultimately a sustainable solution, which is very ideal what we are exactly looking for. Uh, so from the fossil fuel economy to the green economy, we need to think we definitely build a strong relationship and uh, synchronize all this uh, ABC uh, together uh, so that we can get 100% a sustainable solution for the future leads. Now, um, uh, so people are uh, very concerned and, uh, you know, uh, well known about the solar cells and mostly uh, the silicon solar cells uh, in on our street or, or the traditional solar cells, uh, which is mostly dominated by the silicons that we all have seen or experienced uh, uh, previously. But there are a various type of solar cells that I'm going to introduce today. So what they are, so solar cells are basically a semiconducting material which can conduct current and at the same time create some voltage and due to that you get some current right uh, so uh, mainly there are two types so one is the crystalline cells another is the thin film cells so what are the crystalline cells so crystalline cell is all uh, again divided into the two categories which is first is the monocrystalline cells and second is the polycrystalline solar cells so the monocrystalline and polycrystalline this is the very uh, you know uh, basic difference that uh, where the atoms are arranged in a regular fashion and in polycrystallines the atoms are uh, uh, or the lattice structures are very uh, distorted order it's i mean in general so both are silicon based so the crystalline cell are mostly silicon based dominated by the silicon where the efficiencies for the monocrystalline 7 to 24 polycrystalline 15 to 20 depends on its size its pattern its its orientation throughout the cell but this is the a rough window and you can see how the cell actually structured uh, their mechanism it's the p type silicon n type silicon uh, and the p type and n type they make a heterojunction over here and then uh, start a depletion zone and the you know the current flows uh, from uh, n to p uh, next is the thin flim cells category where uh, amorphous silicon cells so it is also silicon cells, but amorphous. And due to the amorphous characteristics, its efficiency is also 5 to 12. So uh, mostly from the uh, beaches or the, you know, from the sea sand, whatever we get is mostly amorphous silicon cells. That's what uh, the efficiency is quite low. Whereas when the amorphous silicon cells, you know, um, are going for uh, lots of changes to its structure by uh, by uh, mechanically or in an industrial process so that the amorphous can be converted to polycrystalline or monocrystalline. So uh, accordingly, we can increase the efficiency. So that's also a strategy. And here also one interesting point is if you change the crystal structure of a semiconducting material, it can change the 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 electrical uh, efficiency as well. Here also a hint. Another one uh, is uh, uh, if we are not uh, completely depends on the silicon and silicon only, let's go to some other materials and which is called the uh, uh, group three, group five in periodic table compound based solar cells. So this can be indium gallium phosphorus based cell, gallium arsenide cell, uh, CIGS, which is the, the copper indium gallium selenide cells, cadmium telluride cells. These cells are also available in the market. They are also also very good. They are called the thin flame based cell and efficiencies lies between uh, for the 3, 5, 18 to 41, 10 to 20. So efficiency also depends on the way we are producing the cells, how facilely we are producing the cells and how the, uh, uh, the you know, the atoms orientation over the cells. That's also important. And the, you can see these are the basic structures of these cells uh, and where once the light uh, 
uh, once the incident like fall here, the, the same same thing, p-type, n-type, the electron get excited, make an excited, uh, exciton, uh, a whole uh, uh, electron and whole combinations, and then started the electricity generation. But now there is a new uh, type of emerging solar cells are here that we can easily make it at home or probably in a lab, in a, in, a, in a college or school level lab. So these are called the emerging solar cells. One is the disensitized solar cell in short DSSC. Another is the perovskite solar cells or in short PSC. So the dye in this solar cells, the concept is actually uh, the very nature inspired uh, from the photosynthesis process. So what happened in photosynthesis, the sunlight uh, uh, you know, comes uh, to the leaf, the chlorophyll uh, absorb the sunlight and converted sunlight to the chemical energy as an ATP. And simil the similar mechanism we can adopt for the emerging solar cells where there is a dye or a perovskite layer which act as a light absorber, which which uh, absorb the light, maximum photons, and they can convert the sunlight, the photon energy to instead of chemical energy in, in solar cells, they convert it to electrical energy because energy by the energy rule, we only convert the energy from one system to another. Uh, we can't destroy it or create energy. So that's the thing. Um, uh, actually happen for the solar basic solar cells um, structure and moving to the this slide uh, uh, next slide that the solar energy which actually have in a bright future and as i mentioned uh, that the solar is the only renewable energy source which could in principle easily meet all the world's energy needs so now here is the question comes that why should we choose the solar energy? And I'm telling you, it's just not like a renewable. So don't think solar energy can be only used for the photovoltaic or energy, I mean, energy generation purposes. It has others, some more uh, interdisciplinary and across different domains uh, application. So photovoltaics, obviously the dominant one where the sunlight convert to electricity. The another interesting application of solar energy is the photocatalytic, where the sunlight can be uh, 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 utilized for the degradation of any dye, of any pollutant, any kind of harmless you know, substance or uh, 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 entity which is available in the water, in which can be available in the soil or in any rock or something. So through the photocatalytic method, utilizing the sun, we can easily uh, make a clean water. I will show you some example uh, in a couple of slides. Um, and also sunlight can help to splitting. So what's the splitting means? It's it's here, it's come the hydrogen generation, which is the another future of uh, renewable sector. So uh, the, produ the production of hydrogen uh, uh, is a, uh, uh, nowadays a very emerging field and um, and the easiest way of hydrogen production is to split the water so h2o2 you can easily get hydrogen out of it but the problem is uh, by theoretically uh, uh, it's very easy to split but but practically you can't split the water like hydrogen and oxygen due to is a uh, strong um, a chemical, uh, the uh, strong ionic and chemical bonds. So uh, what happened? So here we can utilize some catalyst uh, and that catalyst absorb the sunlight and that helps to bring down or bring up depends on the band gap uh, so that they can break easily the hydrogen and oxygen and generate more hydrogen uh, as if uh, that can be utilized as a futuristic fuels. So that's the thing. Sunlight can also help to absorb. Uh, so there are various materials, plasmonic materials that can help uh, to, to detect uh, our uh, some, some pathological uh, systems in our body or in, in some viruses detection that can be easily uh, detected by the sunlight if there is a material can absorb the light. So when I speak about the light, remember it's not just the visible light. There will be UV light. There will be an IR light. So approximately from 200 to say to 2,500 nanometers. So that's the broad range of light. But mostly what we can see is the visible light, but there is a, uh, you know, um, a majority or a significant part of the NIR light as well in, in our application. 
Uh, another uh, is the photodynamic. So what is the photodynamic? It's the sunlight uh, uh, doing some changes to the, some biological activity. For example, there is an enzyme which is very inactive and which can help to digest uh, your uh, our uh, stomach issues. Uh, but uh, they need uh, to activate the enzyme. We need some sunlight. So there should be some light ignite on the enzyme so they can in immediately start to digest the system in a very quicker way. So that's the way the photodynamic dynamic even for the cancer research they use some uh, light to uh, the light and sound treatment you know uh, where uh, the sunlight or the simulated sunlight can play a crucial role photothermal is another interesting topic so mostly causing for the photothermal or the heat generation. So how we can remove those excessive heat to our, from our system. So that's what uh, there is a term called the photothermal that also we are applying. So in our group, we do all this type of research, but definitely photovoltaics is one of the leading one. But uh, it's, as I mentioned, is it, it is not just renewable. So to do all this stuff, all this research, all this activity, what you need? You need a material. So being a chemist, you need to develop some novel material, some interesting interesting material that can be actually helps to integrate within your particular application and extract the best outcome uh, out uh, outcome of it so why involvement of material science is necessary for solar energy research and here is the importance of material sciences uh, bringing up. So uh, as, as I mentioned that uh, you can see which is the UV light, visible light and the infrared light but uh, Sadly, uh, there is a no material available in this world. They can absorb all the wavelength of light at a time. So either the material is active for visible or UV or UV visible or UV in IR, but not all together. So, so still uh, scientists are searching for that material and, and they are trying to involve one with the other material so that at a time we can uh, you know, absorb most of the sunlight. Uh, because we are losing uh, uh, many sunlight uh, uh, when we are uh, applying this material. Now, uh, in, in solar cells particularly, uh, there is a open circuit voltage uh, generation is happened. So when um, we developed a material which can actually uh, considering all these factors uh, together. So this can be recombination this can be the light intensity a temperature a reverse saturation current a charge transfer state a density of state and many many others so it completely depends that what material you are using what is that material's band gap the crystal structure the the how pure this material is it a phase pure material is it a combined material and also what is the morphology of the material is it a one dimension three dimension two dimension so the the state of that material is actually govern all this factor of a solar cells and that ultimately give you the uh, you know uh, the the current the efficiency of that cell uh, here is a quick example you can see. This is a single crystal material. This is a polycrystal material having low porosity. And this is a polycrystal material. I'm sorry for this. Uh, uh, the polycrystal material with a high porosity. You can see any, any, any differences that you can see. Uh, definitely there is a big difference. So there is a difference is between the transparency of the material. So you can see the polycrystalline and the single crystalline and along with its porosity distribution, how it can directly control the transparency of your material. Because in solar cell, it's most important how you can make a transparent material because it's it, it, that's what they can absorb more light. They can allow more light into the system. So it, that's what mostly single crystal system is a bit costlier, a bit expensive because it's more transparent compared to the polycrystal system. But in case of polycrystal system, if we can uh, higher the porosity or lower the porosity, we can tune the transparency accordingly. So here is the important, it's just a quick example uh, of the material. I will give a more example uh, again, uh, but it's just a quick overview that how a materials can play crucial role for the solar cells research. So basically what we do, we develop the material, we 
uh, uh, you know, designing the material according to our application. We do some uh, chemistry. We do some engineering. Next, we develop the design, uh, the, 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 the device and a prototype, and then we go for the, its performance evolution. So that is our strategy of research. So uh, next, when is your material has been developed? Now, then the next step is to diagnosis. So, uh, so what type of diagnosis tool or we call in the characterization tool can be implemented? So there are various, various type of uh, uh, instrument available. So according to the property of the material, what exactly the users, the researchers are looking for, we can go ahead one by one characterizations to understand the material what we are looking for is formed or not. So we can go for the optical characterization, for the structural characterization, followed by a surface characterizations, and there are some added characterization like magnetic, electrical, ductility, uh, tensile strength. So different uh, kind of spectroscopic techniques uh, uh, are there to to understand whether my material, what exactly I'm planning is forming or not. If not, then what are the changes required? So that is why you need to go for some testing about your material that, that what exactly happening inside it. So this is our department, a renewable energy department uh, in the solar energy research group. This is our reef building. We call the renewable energy engineering facility building. And uh, you can see uh, we installed our windows. We installed the solar uh, uh, you know, panels in our building. Uh, uh, anything for a pilot change, uh, sorry, uh, as a pilot plan. And, and our building is actually uh, saving 40 to uh, 30 to 40 percent energy bills when we are implement our cells over here so that's the thing uh, and regarding to my research, I'm working, as I mentioned, in the photovoltaic, uh, which is mostly the perovskite, quantum dots, and the concentrated photovoltaic-based. Glazing and solar thermal, this is quite interesting topic. So those who are very new to this area, it can open a new uh, avenue for you. Uh, wastewater treatment, uh, the photocatalytic high, uh, absorption, and solar fuel, which included the photoelectrical, sorry, photo, uh, electrochemical and photocatalytic of hydrogen production and and uh, that is why uh, we, uh, we 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 uh, you know structurized our uh, research and we are trying to make a circle out of it so that uh, it should not be a one time research it must be repeatable it must be going for many cycles and for the more more and more use and probably uh, large scale production just a quick example that uh, the effect of morphology on disensitized solar cell. If you remember, uh, just a few slides back, I talk about the disensitized solar cells, which is mostly uh, 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 emerging solar cells technology inspired by the the. Uh, the photosynthesis process, the natural photosynthesis process. So uh, what we developed, so we developed some um, uh, photo anode, uh, which is to, uh, cadmium stannate based. And you can see here, this is the complex synthesis process that what we can do. But what I'm trying to say, the effect of the morphology here, we have developed some cubicle shape uh, photo anode and some particle or random particle shapes photo anode. And this shape is actually depending that how you control the synthesis process, what are the agents you are using, how you maintain the temperature uh, during the procurement of the material development. So all these things is here. This is the phase development, structure development. But ultimately, my point is to say, this is the cube structure. This is the particle structure you can see here. And when we develop develop some cell out of it, a device, solar cells device, which is called the dye. You can see the difference between the current. So the, the, the cuboid particles show higher current, which is almost roughly uh, 9 milliampere centimeter square, whereas the particle shows roughly, say, uh, 6 milliamps per centimeter square. So this is the case. So the part, the cuboid is getting more current compared to the particle. And why? What is the reason behind this? Is This is the reason. Because any 3D structures, you know, um, uh, has an advantage of a six 
face it so the current can get more surface area you know and to at a single time more electron can pass through compared to a particle where it is a zero dimensional so there is just only one way and due to in between gap the current can be trapped over there so i'm just giving you a flavor and idea that how if you just tune the morphology your current enhan enhancement uh, 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 can be easily visible there. But again, it is hardly, uh, it is very difficult to get uh, this type of material in a synthesis way. So synthesis also play a crucial role and how you're designing your material and the uh, facile synthesis policy, that's also important parameter. Again, there is another strategy to increase uh, cells performance, and which is here we can uh, we have taken the perovskite solar cell and through the Fresnel lens. So a lens, uh, it's it's just a lens, a cell. So we, if you just look at this picture, so there is a lens. This is the cell. We concentrate the light through the lens over the cell so that it can generate more current at a single time. So we vary the focal length variation between the lens and the cell and also the irradiation. So what is the power of the light is coming? Is it a low, high, medium? So the power is actually reflect the day, the, ori the, the, the original day or the practical days. It's a, it is a cloudy day, it's a full sunny day, it's a raining day. So accordingly, your sunlight intensity can change. And, and you can see this is the instrument what we are using. So this is the cell, this is the perovskite cell, this is the lens, and this is the focal length. We vary this. And accordingly, the power of this cells is changing. How it can change that I will show you here. You can see here, this is the uh, current voltage plot we call the IV plot. This is the power voltage plot. And if we change, you know, without optics, I mean, there is no lens. If you just change the focal, varying the focal length, uh, you can see it's the 500. Where if you introduce the lens, which can concentrate the light, the concentration of the light here is the is the catalyst. Here is the factor which can enhance. You see the power is um, uh, almost five times high compared to this. Similarly, uh, when we add with optics at different focal length, you, you just look at the figures. If you just have a look, the power, the power is here 600 for the 10 centimeter distance. If you increase the distance 20 centimeters, so the distance is actually this one, this in between the cells and the Fresnel lens. So you, you just see the power is 600 here and the power is 800 here, the power is more than 1,500 here. So the focal length also uh, is a critical factor here that how much uh, an optimized length, uh, focal length we need to concentrate the light at a single point. And this work has been done with APFL Switzerland and uh, yes. So the next very interesting topic is about the building fenestration and energy positive building. So those who doesn't know about this topic and very new, I think, for the Indian people because they doesn't use a heater usually in their houses. So uh, so to to uh, you know make more energy positive and less carbon emitted building, we we go for this called the energy efficiency measurement in the building. So it's basically uh, depends on a few factors, calling that the reducing heat demand, reducing cooling demand, energy use for the lightning. Uh, reducing energy use for the heating water, uh, good housekeeping and the people solution, and reducing energy and requirements for the ventilations. So all these parameters are equally contributed to maintaining the energy efficiencies building. And I just want to give you a quick uh, overview that how much heat actually we are exchanging uh, from a house and in a UK based or the European based house. So mostly you you lose away uh, you know your house heat from the roof. Uh, through floor 15, through um, uninsulated wall 30, and through window and doors is uh, almost 30. Now, the thing is, we can't do any big changes over flooring, roofing, or walls. So what we can change is our door and the window, which is the easiest way, you know, to, to, to check your uh, uh, possibility of your research, window and door changing. So here, uh, what we can do, so we develop some novel material, some exciting technology that can be a high risk approach. So with this, uh, this is the current situation of a window heat exchange, that how uh, the light falls on a window and it can keep your uh, temperature maintenance and you don't need to turn on an AC or heater if there is some smart windows come. 
So I'm not going through all the details uh, individually, but uh, uh, this is the thing that uh, we need to reduce the thermal conductivity of a window here. The thermal conductivity and the heat diffusivity plays a very crucial role. And to do that, what our approach is to make a smart composite material, which can show a synergistic thermal and optical properties and minimize the thermal conductivity and enhanced heat capacity. Uh, of course, uh, uh, here also an importance of material science because uh, without material science, we cannot design this kind of uh, features in a material. So a quick example, what I have uh, we have done here, we made some hydrogel. So hydrogel, what we why we choose? Because hydrogel as a, uh, a biocompatible uh, material and very easy to synthesize. So there is no harsh chemical using or complex situation of synthesis. So hydroperoxide cellulose and polyacrylic acid. So you can see this is a window. Uh, you can see. I have a demo right now. So this is the window uh, here. We fill the hydrogel over here. You can see the hydrogel change its transparency and block NIR light according to different temperature changing. Uh, so just 22 degree, 40 degree, 5 degree. So the transparency of the material changing according, this is what we call the thermotropicity, which is very popular in the, in the biomedical field, but not in the energy field. So I try to, take advantage of that property to bring into the energy. The next is the climate adaptable hydrogel. Uh, and we use this hydrogel window for various testing, you know, maintaining their, keeping their pH and all those stuffs. Uh, uh, I'm not going to the details, but just show you that how exactly uh, we, we tested it at various temperatures to ensure the hydrogel is keep maintaining the room thermal comfort level, which I will disclose in this, in this here you can see. So what happened if you use this type of window Window. So you can see the surface, the, the temperature of if, if there is a glass air glass and glass hydrogel glass, the hydrogel is maintaining the temperature, reducing to up to 30 where the air is in constantly increasing, continuously increasing more than 40. Whereas at the indoor temperature, at low temperature, you can see at low temperature, our uh, because low temperature, we need warmer climate inside the house, so it can maintain the temperature up to 15, 18, whereas uh, if it is air, there is a reducing system. And you can see uh, if the outdoor temperature is constantly increasing up to 50, your room temperature still remain up to 22. So there is a 20 degree uh, temperature difference what we can see. And this indication is that if we use this type of smart hydrogel system, we don't need to turn on an AC or heater, whatever the outside weather doesn't matter so that we can save or we can eliminate dependency on some electrical appliances. So that's the way you can generate some, uh, you know, energy positive buildings. And what is the basic uh, uh, fundamental chemistry behind this hydrogel? Um, uh, it, it's because of uh, the different type of hydrogen and what and different types of uh, ionic bonding are over here and according to the temperature they are changing its uh, water molecule binding sites which can generate uh, some osmotic pressure and change its structure uh, so that is why it's uh, we measure the hydrodynamic volume and also measure the osmotic pressure changing and that leads to finally a transparency uh, uh, sorry hello Yeah, you are fine. Uh, just an announcement. Uh, if this link get disconnected, kindly um, join, rejoin this link. Okay, we'll continue. Okay, thank you. An announcement to everyone: uh, If this link get uh, gets disconnected, kindly rejoin using the same link. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm visible right now. May I audible and visible? Yes, yeah. yes. You are okay, okay. Fine. Yeah. So I'm just showing you a quick video that if, if you just have a look. So uh, you can see here the hydrogel over here and there is a sunlight is coming and you see that the, how the temperature increases and it changes its transparency. So again, when the sunlight off, which indicate the night time, you can see the transparency is getting far better, 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 and it's more transparent. Again, if you go back, see it is, let's 
transparent when there is, you see the transparency change. So due to this transparency change, they can control the room temperature. So this is your outside, this is your inside. So if outside temperature is 50, your inside temperature will be 22 and you don't need to turn on an AC. So this is the way the hydrogel can maintain that room temperature uh, comfortment level. Uh, uh, very quickly about the passive cooling signs, well, what people doesn't know about the passive cooling. So the heat, and here is the term called the heat stress. What happened to the heat stress? So heat stress can be for your um, egg production, for your boiled egg. So these are all the heat stress and heat stress have a direct effect on the dairy industry and, and we have uh, implemented for the concentrated photovoltaic system. So when there is a light, if there is a continuous sunlight, there is continuously, uh, apparently uh, heat can generate. So what happened when the heat generated, uh, it can cause many things. It can deteriorate from your normal routine and also it can change your different uh, uh, you know, appearance. Uh, it can make you more stress in your life. And, and what happened to the dairy industry, I'm telling you uh, that uh, the cow is starting uh, taking more water or they are dependent on the more cooling. And, and as a result, the milk quality of the cow is getting deteriorate. So whatever the nutrition value, what we are expecting for a normal cow, due to the long heat stress effect, the milk qualities become very poor. So we need to remove this heat stress and instead of switching on a fan or an AC, uh, we have some solution that how passively we can control this heat and we can remove it. So what we have done, you can see here, so we have developed some uh, graphene oxide coating uh, over here in, in some aluminum foil and you can see how stable this coating are. So the, the, the graphene coating can be used as a wallpaper. So in your house, if you put the graphene coating uh, uh, as a wallpaper, it can extract your heat. So what, what, what our strategy was, we can implement this uh, graphene wallpaper in a cow burns or in a farmhouse uh, where the cows are there. So uh, the cow is actually generating more heat uh, uh, due to its stomach uh, and, and, and all these biological issues. So the heat can be absorbed by this, this systems. And what we have shown here, you can see that if the outside temperature is increasing constantly, the inside temperature is still remain to 20. So the blue one is the outside, uh, sorry, the green one is the outside temperature and the red one is the inside temperature. And it is the, uh, and others temperature are that how the heat can be retained for longer time. So that after, now, uh, after the sunset, they can release the heat back again to the farm or the houses. So this is the strategy. Another one, the similar graphene coating what we have used for the concentrated cell. As I mentioned, if you remember the couple of slides back, we concentrate the light at a single point, which can generate a maximum temperature up to 250 degrees Celsius just in a two or three minutes. So uh, that can distract your cell, that can completely uh, you know, break your cells, your devices. So to remove that heat, we implement the graphene coating uh, under the cells at a very different thickness and this coating is actually help us to remove the temperature uh, to maintain the temperature below 200 and that can keep and maintain the high efficiency for a longer time so if there is a concentration of light the heat will generate and we need to bypass the heat with some other system and if we not bypass the cell will show some efficiency high efficiency that's fine but it will not be for longer time so to maintain the efficiency for longer time we need need to remove the heat and as a result we use some graphene our uh, graphene system our graphene filters so that uh, uh, it can immediately remove the uh, heat excessive heat and maintain the performance for longer time quickly there is a wastewater treatment research uh, as i mentioned that uh, you can develop some catalyst that in presence of sunlight that can uh, degrade the overall uh, 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 dyes or any contaminate available in the wastewater and you can get some clean water. Here we used uh, some cadmium uh, sulfide based catalyst which has grown to the ESM. So ESM is an eggshell membrane which is available from your boiled egg or, or the or, or, or eggshell, normal eggshell, which is usually a waste. So we want to, because this is an enzyme which can help 
helps to uh, grow the CDS uh, under the UV lysis assistor synthesis method. So, so, so this is the thing. Um, okay, so this is the thing uh, that. Uh, uh, the, the the CDS is actually looks like and what we have done. So uh, we you can see here. So this is the manganese uh, what we have chosen. So manganese is the purple uh, color. And when you add CDS as different. So after 50 minutes, a complete manganese contaminated water is see how it. Uh, getting clear. So this is the way that we use this cattle in presence of sunlight. And this measurement you can indirectly measure uh, 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 through the spectrophotometer. So here you can see uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, manganese uh, uh, manganese seven peak and how it converted to manganese two peaks over here through the spectrophotometer's characterization. So manganese seven uh, or five is toxic, and when it converted to two, it's non toxic. Another example is the CDS, cadmium sulfide remove. And the, in this case, we use some, um, some zinc oxide based, uh, 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 sorry, some CDS based catalyst again to remove the chromium. So chromium-6 is toxic, chromium-3 is non-toxic. So we need the catalytic reduction using this catalyst in presence of sunlight. And we have... Uh, Okay, uh, and we have generated of out of this. Again, some wastewater treatment. Uh, we use some cattle, graphene based catalyst, which can actually on and off process. So through the photoluminescence study, you can easily detect if there is any 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 type of. Uh, 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 any, uh, any type of biological uh, 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 contamination over in your water over there, especially the E. coli bacteria is very uh, common in, in, in worst water, so you can easily detect. And we just started with this um, uh, water, uh, some hydrogen project, and we are generating some different types of uh, uh, catalyst to generate hydrogen and uh, with the Middle Eastern many countries. And what are the take home messages finally? So we are almost to the wrap up. So what would happen if we converted the Sahara Desert with solar panels? And uh, the solar energy may appear to be have the potential and economical, but there are some hidden costs. Uh, if imagine the panels, panels everywhere and uh, if what happened that the na ha, do the solar panels work at night by harnessing moonlight? So these are the, some typical questions that uh, I would like to give you as a take home message is to think about it that how, okay, just ignore it. And again, think some differently. We are working on the butterfly wings again to concentrate it photovoltaic, how a butterfly wing, wing can concentrate the light and it can be a more uh, sustainable way to generate electricity. Uh, smart window technology that we don't need to depend on the AC on heater. Uh, microbial solar cells and microbes can generate energy directly. And at the same time, the solar waste management that once the panel finish is working, how we can uh, uh, make it a recycle and life cycle analysis. So I'm available on various research block and in, in various public engagement, engagement platform, including Spotify and YouTube for uh, many podcasts. If you are interested, go and have a listen. So thank you very much for your kind attention. I would like to take some couple of questions if there is a time and happy to connect with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anurag. It was really a nice and informative talk. Actually, we're not that much aware of uh, like uh, that passive cooling and everything. So it was very nice to hear all them about. So I would like uh, to ask um, and request our participants uh, participants to kindly ask questions. So for the students, Anurag is Bengali. So if you want to uh, ask questions in Bengali, that is also fine. Uh, so. Um, Jamon uh, Kushi question Koro, Jakichu Mone Proshnuruche, feel free to ask him questions. Hello, sir. Uh, this is Digvijay from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Uh, sir, I'm working on a double proscribed system and single proscribed system, semiconductor systems. Are you getting my voice? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Sir, uh, my question is the, uh, why there is a need of uh, uh, mixer of some organic system? With, okay, uh, this uh, thank system? you. So uh, I would like 
to start this the session questions on the session we asked uh, omit uh, digrija is asking so can you please mute for a few minutes after he finishes you may ask your question please Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm asking uh, that the, why there is an underlying need to mix organic system with this uh, oxide perovskite system mm -hmm. to get a better photovoltaic or uh, uh, photoelectric. Is there any possibility to work with oxide systems only? Okay. Uh, thank you, Dick Vijay, for your question. Um, uh, I mean, integration of two different systems. The basic fundamental is you are expanding your application or you are expanding the properties of the material. For example, as I, I, I already mentioned about that, for a single material, it's very difficult to absorb all the sunlight. So what they have done, they mix, they do some composite or they, they make some big composite with the loads of other chemicals or other elements so that it can absorb sunlight for a longer period of time for a more wavelength. So that may, have, may be the reason. If you only work for the organic uh, uh, semiconducting, the problem of the band gap, definitely. Second is it's prolonged sustainable performance. So they can easily, uh, uh, you know, they are mostly hygroscopic. They can easily react with environment so that here is the importance of the inorganic material so that when, when there is some inorganic materials involving within the organic system, so it can retain its performance for a longer time and at the same time it can help to absorb more sunlight for, for longer time as well. Yeah, sir, uh, like uh, organic systems are oxygen sensitive also, as we exposed mm -hmm. under the uh, Yeah, yeah, environment. that's what you need in organic, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but the, this inorganic system like semiconducting, uh, semiconductor perovskite systems are well suited mm -hmm. for the photovoltaic application, but the problem is with efficiency. So... Uh, because of the band gap here again. So, yeah. uh, because they are mostly in the UV band, UV zone band, you can see 3.1. So we need to bring this band gap down towards uh, uh, towards uh, uh, more lower energy, right? So to down it, you need some organic because in organic structure, you have more pi pi interaction, more extension of bonds. So it's easy to absorb the light compared to a inorganic. Sir, so one last thing. Sir, uh, what's your idea? Like, means uh, it's kind of suggestion. I need a suggestion from your side. What's the idea we can build with this uh, oxide uh, semiconductor oxide system to increase the uh, uh, this uh, to decrease the recombination rate, or better to say to increase the uh, surface reaction? Or uh, yeah, yeah. So, so are you from IISC Bangalore, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, I have a colleague over there, Sachin. So you in materials uh, department. I know, you just, I know, I know. Okay, yeah. So you can talk to him. Sachin is one of my good colleague and collaborator as well. So the quickly to your answer is to to increase the surface area of your material. Yeah. So increase the surface area as many times as possible. So to increase it, you need to change the morphology or you need to make it more anisotropic. Yeah, sir. But sometimes it's changed the structure also. So band structure is changed. Um, but that this is the way. That is what. That is that that you need to take care. The balance between the performance and that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. And thank yeah, you. Thank you, Dick. Yeah. Next question, please. Dr. Amit, you were asking some questions. Uh, yes, I was asking a simple question, and uh, it may be very really rele relevant and uh, more futuristic. So, uh, why this uh, efficiency is like uh, right now? Everybody is trying to increase that. Why it is difficult, and how long it may be wait? Uh, we have to wait to get like better efficiency in this solar cell. If you address this uh, question, the yes. more general. Uh, yeah. Would like. yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Maji, for asking this. So popular question all the time I hear, and uh, no question is uh, silly or uh, you know weak. So thank you for this. Uh, okay, so there is a theoretical limit of every 
every each single materials in this world. So the theoretical limit uh, of any solar cell is 31% approx 31.5% around so we can't beat this theoretical limit now to reach the theoretical limit again come back to the fundamental we need to absorb all the light from 200 to 3500 nanometer range all the light then you can generate this 31% efficiency but in this world currently no material can absorb all the range of the wavelength of light together either the range either they are, they are very selective towards uv or visible or partially to the nir now what what is the solution so the as an alternative solution uh, scientists are trying to make some tandem cells so what is the tandem cells so the tandem cell is your one cell suppose the silicon shows 20% and your perovskite cell shows say 40% uh, sorry uh, uh, 15%. So usually they try to combine these two. So at least theoretically, 20 plus 15, 35%. But in practical, we get at least 30%. So something the tandem way. Again, if we uh, take some cells, 20%, 20%, 20%. So altogether gives us 60% of efficiency. So it's the tandem way we can go, but not for a single cells. This is just because there is a theoretical limit, there is a band gap limit, and we are losing other all the energies, all the sun, like microwaves, all other waves. So we, do, we don't have a control over there, so we can't do anything. Yeah, but it's progressing. It's slow but steady, but at least we have some alternatives currently that uh, we can tackle or reduce our energy demand uh, using the solar power yet, yeah. I hope I have justified your uh, your query. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Is there any question? Uh, thank you, Dr. Mulaksen. Uh, thank you for yeah, answering. No thank you. If there is no more questions right now, then we can uh, proceed to our next talk. Uh, Dr. Mulaksen, do you need um, uh, five minutes break? Are you at okay? No, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm energized. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. So we, it, through this link, right? I yes. Uh, yeah, I think it actually it was uh, almost one hour, around 2.25, right? So it's still continuing, so you can <laughs> start. So I just think 15, 15 more minutes, hopefully. Yeah, no finish. problem, no problem. I think students are waiting eagerly for that talk. So <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> feel free to take your time, not a problem at all. And okay. I thank everyone uh, for being in the meeting. And uh, please bear with us for uh, 30 more minutes. And hopefully you will uh, hear a very uh, nice talk and informative talk. And uh, please, again, feel free to ask any questions. Okay, what again, I'm going to share my screen and I'm very weak in that. Okay. okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, it's visible now. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Dr. Debrina. Uh, so again, my <laughs> welcome back. And this is the next uh, topic of discussions today where I'm going to highlight some emerging prospects of the higher studies opportunities in the UK. Uh, those who are very new, especially I know the rural people and 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 and, and many people, those who doesn't have any any previous idea about how uh, 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 foreign study can be implemented like master's course or PhD course. So I hope it will be worth to have a have a journey on, on this topic. Okay, so yes. So the very popular question is the why study in the UK? So why you come to abroad leaving your home country, right? So definitely uh, there are many positive things. So I will take 
I will uh, currently discuss about the positive things and also discuss the negative things at the end. So what's the positive side of that? That high quality education. So you can get some quality education, some advanced level and up to date uh, level of syllabus uh, uh, and the score structure aligned with your interest. So that is the basic advantage. Uh, the home to the world oldest academic institution. So we have here Cambridge, Oxford, and, and oldest institution uh, in every corner of the UK. Uh, mostly they are 500, 600 years old universities. So definitely they, they, they take a lead. They are nothing new. Uh, to this uh, system. So the renowned uh, teaching and research excellence. Uh, so there are a few independent websites. I will share them uh, that through that uh, website, you can independently check, anonymously check that whether you are selecting a university, the course is good for you, bad for you, or what is the future of that easily. The short and the flexible academic programs. Uh, so mostly the master's courses are in the UK in one year. So you can easily finish your study uh, within one year of master's. Uh, there are a variety of subjects, interdisciplinary subject, not uh, fundamental, straightforward physics, chemistry, maths, uh, like this, or biology. Maybe there are some, some, some different types of topics that I will disclose also. Mm -hmm variety of cultures. So there is a high chance to meet uh, beyond your comfort zone. You can meet some people from US, some people from Africa, some people from Poland, Germany, uh, you know, an experience. Skill development at the same time. Uh, next is how to find uh, your course university in the UK. So there are the five steps. Uh, so number one is the uh, counseling from qualified UK education consultants. Uh, analyze the entry requirement and check your affordability. Third is decide on the universities and the courses you are trying to apply. The fourth one is to submit your application and clear the interviews. And fifth is the proceed for the apply for your visa. So any foreign country visa is the one of the biggest challenge and biggest thing for uh, secure your position in that uh, university. So all these five steps uh, we need to do. Usually people are charging a lot for these consultations. And, and uh, here I'm giving you a very, very fundamental that you don't need for a consultation. Just simply check through your phone or, or, or laptop, a few websites that you can easily get some idea what is happening here, what is the so resources of to study uh, in a foreign country. So please ask yourself that uh, uh, what subject is right for you where you can find out more, thinking about more than one course or subject, uh, think beyond your uh, comfort zone. What types of course are there? How do you want to study home or away? Where should I study? So first decide these things in your mind. The most leader student definitely not knowing. And I, I thought it is very important for the student. They must know about the university alliance system. So what is that? So in, in UK, we have some university. They are belonging to a, 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 a group. Uh, for example, Russell Group, one of the popular. You can take a screenshot or note down these words. So uh, Russell Group is one of the leading UK private groups where they are allowed, like our university is part of the Russell Group. Cambridge also a part of the Russell Group. So what happened here, the government, here the government didn't funding the university. The university runs by its own. The university runs through its project, its funding from uh, other country, I, I mean, other sources other uh, international students. So university is manage their funding by its own. Government didn't pay any money to any university in the UK. Government only built the structure of the syllabus or the policies of the of the education and system, that's it. But funding wise, they are not, I mean, they fund a partial, but they are not in kind of Indian system that they are not dependent on state or central government or something like that sense. So university mo mostly run by its own funding. So, so please check the university alliance. 
uh, in Russell's group, for example, the teaching excellence framework, uh, what does it mean for you? So how the students can interact with the teacher and how a teacher is actually capable to delivering their lecture to the student. What is the uh, way of their delivery, uh, delivering part? How they're interacting, they're interacting just to make a lecture or they are going for a field trip or they are giving some in-hand experience, some demonstration, how they are making a complex complex uh, you know situation to giving a very clear easy solution so this kind of thing that you can check in the teaching excellence frame framework and you can select your university accordingly how easy is to switch courses once i'm at the university that's also a problematic and uh, thing so suppose i i joined as a uh, physics honors in some courses later after six months i realized uh, Physics is not my subject. I, I think I'm, I'm very happy with the chemistry again. So can I go back to the chemistry? This is possible, by the way. But how easily you can shift from one to another course that you can think about it. But this is very rare. But still, there is an option. Most importantly, the course fee. How? What is the course fee? I will give you a quick example of this, that uh, how expensive a course uh, uh, to pursue your, your course over in, in any UK universities. Oh, God. Yeah. So this is the most important website. Those who are thinking of uh, UK universities uh, overlook and to find your course suitable courses uh, throughout the Great Britain or UK. Please note down. This is called the UCAS uni uh, UCAS uh, uh, website. Even uh, you can open an account here. You can check the further education, under edu undergrad, sports track, apprenticeship, uh, uh, careers, different options are there. Go to the website, check your course, the uni colleges, because during your enrollment in any course, you need to open the UCAS account. So it's up to, it's free to use. It's just open to all. Go ahead and just explore the website. Every details of any university is up to date here. Okay, so what are the UK top courses at this moment? So uh, the, the, the the geology, earth sciences, and the renewable energy is one of the top uh, courses, which is currently there is a queue you know, to enroll in these courses in any university. The data sciences and the business analytics, mathematics, economics, uh, actual science and, um, uh, sorry, actuarial science and sat statistics, information technology. Uh, of course, this includes the AI stuffs as well. Biological and biomedical sciences, computer science, architecture, medicine and dentistry. Uh, interior designing, film and photography and sports science, interestingly. So usually there is a two uh, intake session, which call the fall session. Another is the summer session. So the fall session in between August and September and the summer session around January uh, after the Christmas. So uh, usually any university in the UK following these two uh, intake session, fall and summer. So if you are planning to go for the summer session, at least you need to start applying and proceed all the things uh, at least a year uh, at least a year ago. So now how to choose a university? So uh, there is a few uh, step and I try to make it a flow chart. It will be easier for you. So decide your course, first of all, higher study academics and professional course, what kind of course you want. Uh, what is the jobs perspective? R&D, if you are interested in higher study and research, then R&D perspective. There are some crash course and internship program. You need some uh, course certificate from UK. They are doing online as well. So just check it out. And the, the next step is very important, which is the first check university ranking from different sources. For example, Times Higher University, uh, QS ranking. Uh, uh, what are these? I forget. So there are the different ranking website. Uh, just just check and and the and, uh, uh, and and just try to make a tally in between those uh, ranking in the universities. Uh, 
uh, remember one thing I always uh, tell to other uh, podcasts as well, that the IITs and ISAs are better than a few universities. So here is the importance of checking the ranking, the, the, the system of that university, how it can evolve. So, so there are many UK universities, those who are very new, in this in this field or in your field they have maybe started this just 20 10 years ago uh, but it doesn't mean that all the university in the uk is are great they are doing an excellent job not really i still believe there are many iits and ir isars available in india they are doing great research great education great stuff so look at that option as well but this is just the idea that how you can you can can, you can upgrade yourself through your course between a foreign country education and your uh, uh, Indian education system. So what are you looking for uh, that is really available in the university? So uh, uh, it's not just to the knowledge adjustment that, okay, I selected this course, I paid, just just I, I need to finish it. Don't do these things. This is a great opportunity. Extract all the possible things out of it. It not necessarily has to align with your course. You can go for multiple, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, multi uh, activities. You may be interested in arts. You may be interested in science, in other sports science or something. So you can go ahead of that. Uh, make a course plan, course duration, your budget management and tuition fees, uh, how the friends and the environment of that uh, courses or the universities that also taken into the account. Okay, now how to apply? This is a very complex thing, but this is the most, uh, 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 I think, common question that uh, the students ask. So you can apply as many as universities if you want, but just mind it, nothing is free in this country. So some uh, 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 application can charge over 50 to 200 pounds, so depends. Initially, they will not charge anything, but if you are selected or if you are cleared the first round, they will start asking you for the money. So just check it out. Uh, you need a two is to one bachelor's degree if you wish to apply to the best universities. So usually it's a three bachelor's course, which is common in India. So no worries about that. And uh, it's better to be a first class degree. Otherwise, 50% is also OK. I mean, nothing this they mentioned about that. Uh, directly, but always, if there is a good score, is there is a good chance. Uh, so each university will have a different price for their master's courses. Okay, so for international students, it vary between fourteen thousands to twenty three thousands, so roughly fourteen lakhs to twenty three lakhs for for uh, for a one year master's course. So it depends which course you are studying. If it is a science based, so bit expensive if it is art space so it's less expensive but it's between to 14 to say 23 or 5 lakhs sometimes this is just the course fee remember so there are always an english requirement an english language requirement so being a non-english speaking country we need to pass any of that so it's called the eyelets or the toefl i will share the website you don't need any special training or session just look at the website go for the youtube videos you will be easily passed i i mean we are very uh, uh, convenient with the english uh, things not too bad uh, so why this is important this uh, because english is the only speaking uh, uh, language uh, i mean the more official language so to ensure that we are able to speak read and listening power is good for the english we need to pass any of these exams so for our eyelids is there is a minimum score of 6.5 and the, for the toefl it's the minimum is 92 points but it depends on university to university and which course you are ap applying for example the university college of london asks for 7.4 uh, 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 master uh, in arts in history courses so it depends university but this is a roughly a barrier 6.5 for eyelets 92 points for TOEFL. now uh, you don't have to do the same course as your first degree for example if you are currently pursuing physics honors you can go for chemistry honors easily in your masters or if you are doing some more specializations course suppose physics honors uh, in in uh, in bachelors you can go for astrophysics masters or something Chemistry, you can go for medicinal chemistry, you can go for industrialization chemistry, or something more specific courses in your master's. There is an option. You will need to submit a personal statement, a CV, and the two references. Of, of course, the references should not be any blood relations. So it can be from your HOD or any 
professor or something like that. So make your CV very strong, as, as strong as possible, and your clear personal statement uh, that what skill you have, why you are interested to pursue this course, what is your dream about this course, something like that. Uh, don't add in your CV what is your hobby, like playing cricket, music, etc. And, and and just simple CV as, as much as possible. Master's degree is your opportunity to specialize. As I mentioned, you can go for more specialization or more selective topics to pursue your master. Not necessarily it has to be very general like bachelor's. So these are the two websites. If you can take a screenshot or note down, this is the ILETS website. This is the TOEFL website. And before applying to these courses, please ready your transcript. So whenever you pass out uh, uh, from your courses in any university, apply for your transcript because transcript is a mandatory document to apply any courses in UK or any European country. So note it down. All the test is, uh, all the details are there. Explore the website and um, don't go for any trap or any consultancy. They are charging a lot. So everything available on website, just go and save your money and time. <laughs> so this is UK. These are the most uh, common, famous universities in the UK. I just give a short example through the Times Higher Education's website. This is a if you just search Times Higher Education website, the website looks like this. It can comes like this. You select any university, select your course. Just going through the website, you can see all the details. How? What is the rank of this uh, that uh, particular module? Uh, what we learn from the module? What is the facilities of the module available? Easily, everything is there. Is a website, dedicated website. Go through, explore it by yourself in your free time. And if you uh, if if you don't know about the UK University, this is the map: the Scotland, England, Wales, uh, Northern Ireland, and. As I mentioned, I'm based on here in Exeter, but my campus is here. So there is London, Cambridge, Oxford, blah, 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 all those things. Yeah, so you can have a look. Uh, next is, there are some interesting courses, those who are cultural and creative person. So they will like this one. So I, I try to make it a slides out of it. So UK universities and some of their unique courses, there are courses like contemporary circus. So circus can be a course here. Uh, it's not just for the amusement or the funds. It can be integrated as a course with the physical theater app capabilities. They are running in the Bath Spa University. Uh, Viticulture and Oniology. Uh, interesting. I don't know. It's the Plumpton College. Uh, the Brewing and Distilling for the Whiskey and those preparations is Harriet Watt University. Baking Science and Technology in London South Bank University. The Surf Science and Technology in the Cornwall College. Uh, they are very interesting. Those who are work, you know, interested in, this, in the ocean and uh, the surfing. Uh, ethical Hacking, Conventry College and Abertry University, Pisa Hut Studies, so related to Pisa development. Um, interestingly, this so Manchester Metropolitan University, uh, perhaps psychology uh, or psychology, I don't know what's that. So it's probably uh, uh, no idea with, about this course, but this is interestingly in the University of Edinburgh, they are pursuing this course study. Applied Golf Management Study, <laughs> University of Birmingham, stand-up master degree. So if you are become a stand-up comedian, you can you need to earn a degree as well. That's available in the University of Kent. Uh, equestrian psychology and the sports sciences available in the Nottingham Trent University. Uh, these are the interesting uh, courses that 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 can be pursued out of your topic. Now, there is a hint to prepare of a good statement of purpose or what we call the SOP. So what you can do, uh, you need to write a good statement of purpose. It should be a free of grammar and spelling mistake. Convey a motivation and enthusiasm that please put some positive, positive things, not the negative things. Uh, at least three quarters directly relevant to charge of the course of the tutor and uh, design like this for, I, I can give you an example that how can you start writing a cover letter or a statement for a uh, statement of purpose when you start. Mm. Uh, and uh, next, I will give you a quick example of the, some hints that keep the design clear and simple for your CV. It can be accurate, positive, no spelling and grammar. Ideally, two pages, A4 size pages, not longer. 
and your personal statement keep it punchy and concise not too much uh, you know uh, futuristics that i am this i am that i i can break the uh, sea i can cross the seven countries not like that so whatever your skill and how you can align your skill with the with the course that 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 connection needs to be built up there are some questionable items so usually i prefer don't need to disclose at your first interaction like your gender nationality date of birth material status doesn't matter who you are because uk is a perfect example of equality diversity and inclusivity country so it doesn't matter whether what is your gender what is your skin color uh, what is your date of birth, material, mari sorry, marital status, or whatever. So it's feel free to avoid these things if you are not. Uh, interest, responsibilities, and achievement, providing they indicate an achievement. So if, for example, you are a football player in your college or you are doing some NCC work in your college, uh, you own some medals, or if you add, uh, uh, the, you have uh, a running an NGO, helping an NGO, that can be some added point. To, you can you can add in your CV so that can be an advantage out of your regular curriculum activity. Uh, there are a few application blind CVs are not taking uh, you know uh, uh, considered. For example, if someone who knows own my destiny but I have no definite long term plans, don't write this kind of statements. Excellent memory skill, good analytical skill, memory skill. Don't write again. Here are my qualifications to overlook. Not like that. My health is my health good uh, that of my parents not so good so don't try it. i believe in helping other people so i am a blood than organ donor not at all just like organ donor if you have a uh, suppose uh, some example or some strong evidence give the link give the, the reference don't say just organ donor i'm reading robbie williams Truth provoking autobiography it doesn't make any sense to your CV. Uh, working on a farm improved my communication skills, which are especially important with the large livestock. I mean, it, this is unnecessarily overselling yourself. Don't do that unless until you have a proof to communicate in your CV. Okay, so try to make it's more punchy and concise and more crisp so that it can be attractive and make it more positive when somebody read it. Uh, so be ready with your updated CV, English language proficiency test, passionate statement of purpose, uh, usually three or two letter of recommendations, academic records, including transcript, and of course, your passport. <laughs> yeah, here are some uh, uh, scholarships that are available that through some scholarship you can uh, join. It's called the Erasmus Mundus. Uh, the India is one of the uh, participating country. You can check the Erasmus Mundus website uh, through various fellowship available, various internship fellowship available for six months visit, one year visit. Check that. Uh, uh, Kivaining uh, UK government scholarships. So you just have a look the Kivaining uh, scholarship schemes. There is called the in in Lux, Chief Dasani Foundation's uh, scholarship schemes, uh, also the Oxford Felix scholarships, uh, which is for the first class UG and PG. Uh, definitely, it's an Oxford University, so their criteria will be more precise, more controlled. Uh, but everything is required. There is IELTS or English requirement, so please keep it in mind. Uh, British Council of India has multiple options, so please check uh, what are the things. Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. I have a student here who owned the scholarship, uh, Commonwealth Scholarship from Kerala. So look at the Commonwealth Scholarship. You can uh, have a tuition fee waive and uh, for two years master, uh, sorry, one year masters or three years PhD uh, post. Uh, sorry. PhD here, you can get it. There are multiple schemes available. Uh, Pamanda Monapa scholarships for particularly University of Cambridge. Uh, now it's time for the visa understanding. So what is the visa? So the UK visa and immigration. And for that, you need to apply for to for a visa. You need a confirmation of acceptance for the study. So when you applied for a course in a university, you paid some some holding fee. So they will give you a confirmation of active acceptance for studies. This is called the cash number. So once you case the cash later, you need to apply for the tire four visa. So what happened in the tire four visa? It's approximately two lakhs for a one year visa costing. You cannot bring any dependents like your wife, mother, husband, 
whatever, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend. So it should be only you can apply for a three more year extension. It's called the PSW route. So you can apply an extension with this visa for another three years. If you are thinking you can pursue your career, your work in the UK, uh, you can work part time even. So there is a 10 hours or I think some restrictions of work, but you can that you can, but there is an expenses as well, not on all the time savings. <laughs> so university job, uh, you can work with the NGOs directly, help them for the voluntary uh, volunteering services. For the PhD, so there are mostly the four routes. One is the fellowship program. As I discussed, there are more fellowship opportunities. Uh, university funding. So if some professor has some funding or university holds some funding, they can release some advertisement and asking the international students to apply. Uh, and that is also through some advertisement scheme. If suddenly some are, if some professor has some funding, they can uh, go in for the advertisement of the PhD. Uh, uh, recruitment. Uh, next is the self-funding, definitely not applicable to us. So if you have money, we can go for it. So uh, these are the things, if you can just have a look that what will be my contribution. When you going for the PhD, you need to uh, think about that. Again, the university ranking, why they will select me across the world. Somebody can apply from China, somebody is from Mexico, somebody from Australia, why they will choose me from India. So I need to convey them. I need to make something, uh, uh, you know, out of it that they should select me. Scope of knowledge exchange, the future scope, the budget and time management, gender aspect, diversity, and how your research is uh, importantly, uh, uh, you know, uh, making some sustainable development goals, uh, especially broader sense, especially societal engagement not just personal research or personal achievement. It's more about the societal achievement that how my research is help other people in the community. So there are a plenty of UK, uh, India PhD fellowship opportunity available. I would recommend to check the two website, which is the GC, uh, GCRF and the DST, uh, 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 DST website, where the what's new section you can see here, the multiple uh, PhD opportunities and whatever the funding uh, or fellowship sources are available. Not, not saying just but not saying every day you need to check just keep checking maybe once in a month once in a two weeks or three weeks something and in a weekend just have a look at what are the fellowship available i have enlisted a few out of them which is mostly per year they have released it's the british evening great scholarship felix Rhodes, commonwealth uh, in Lang, Scotland, Saltair, Goa Education Trust, Queen Mary University, University of Westminster Scholarship. So there are a few of them, but it's it depends uh, how the DST is releasing is what. So keep update in this those two websites. I'm almost going to finish. So yes, so now the negative things. So before deciding to come to the UK, please pay attention. The weather here is what weather is horrible, uh, uh, all the time raining. Even in the winter, in minus 10 degrees, it's also raining. So rain, rain, go away. We can't say come again another day. We don't want rain, but rain is here. Tempor I mean, permanently looks like. This is the temperature range, which is the maximum and minimum temperature throughout the world. You can, uh, throughout the uh, year, you can see. If you have a homesickness, so that can be uh, a dominating factor to come in the uh, Western country or out, out of the your comfort zone, self-work service. So you have to do your all the work from cleaning, uh, bedding, everything, cooking, uh, washing. So it's it's yours. So do that well. Multicultural thing, you can meet many people in a in a single time. So you can see. Uh, black people, you can meet white people, you can meet brown people, different religions, different their thoughts, their mind, different culture. Go beyond your own same self comfort zone so you can meet a more interdisciplinary, intercultural activities. Uh, initially, there will be some rapid savings because you are earning almost to almost say roughly 10 pounds per hour. So 20 hours job, so easily you can get, but there is also some 
some uh, expenses as well due to inflation stuffs. So you may have to do some part-time jobs like for petrol pumps, super stores, because here all jobs are equally payable. Not like that. I'm working on petrol pump. I will be less. I'm working in a university. I will be paid more. Not like that. All jobs, money is equal. So don't think this work is bad or this working good, but these are all part-time jobs. You may be sick than usual. So there is uh, plenty of six you know viruses still there like hay fever cold sore sharing things with other nationalities probably so take care of your health as well so i think i have finished so thank you for your attention hope it's worth to have a look and if you have any question i'm happy to answer it thank you thank you dr Rurak. yes uh, dr shuman please go ahead Uh, you are on mute, Dr. Shuman. Uh, you are still on mute. Okay. No, uh, am I audible right now, sir? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, you are. So, is there any problem for Indian students to study in UK after Leicester incident? Because I have uh, uh, just uh, read a report uh, published in Daily Mail and clearly UK administration raised their, uh, 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 pointed their finger to, uh, to our uh, uh, government. So is there any problem for uh, for being a Hindu, uh, Indians or Muslim Indians after legislature incident? The UK Prime Minister even a Hindu. I mean, honestly speaking, okay. so <laughs> I, I I don't think it it's not a, it's maybe a, a, a particular region, and we don't know. It's it's more about education. It's more about political uh, or geopolitical questions. But uh, honestly, no, nothing. It's 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 open to all. Any people can come. Any people can work. Any people can learn. So there is nothing about uh, fear or security issues. I'm living last six years, so I didn't face any problem. Yeah. No, sir. Uh, just I am asking this. Uh, I know nothing because I have uh, read uh, you know, some portal about legislature incident. And furthermore, I, I had one more question. Perhaps UK Supreme Court uh, said the uh, Rwanda policy is unlawful. And uh, Rishi Shunok uh, told that, uh, no, uh, we did not uh, ship from our stand and Swell of Government was fired from a service by Rishi Shunok. So <laughs> I know nothing about this. I have just reading this life. You are living in UK. I am asking this how much uh, safe it's for uh, uh, India because it is the third largest Muslim pop uh, population country is India. And after legislature incident, and also Swell of Government was fired from a service, and some uh, criticized our uh, Rwanda policy. Um, first of all, uh, Rwanda policy is not applicable for Indians, and it's nothing related to the Indians' things. And no, I think no, no, this is not for uh, Indians, but UK Supreme Court told this this is unlawful. Uh, if so it I'm is unlawful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, if it is uh, unconstitutional. I, you mean to say that? So if it is unconstitutional, then definitely it's unlawful. What what should we do? Yeah, I mean, and by the way, this year UK also have the looks about the the parliament election, and you don't know maybe there is a change. Yeah. Okay. Any other question, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. In case of any other questions, uh, please write to me or write on Urag. Uh, definitely, he will be able to answer you guys. So now let's thank our speaker, Dr. Urag, and of course, all the participants. I will I request uh, Mr. Partho Purkait, a faculty member of uh, our department, to convey the vote of thanks. Over to you, Partho. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Madam, for giving me this opportunity. On behalf of Department of Chemistry, we would like to thank each and everyone who have attended this webinar. We thank Mr. Joydev Haldar, our GB president, for his support. 
our TIC, Professor Deprashat Mondal, has been able to inaugurate this webinar in spite of his busy schedule. We are very much thankful for his support. Professor Ranjini Guha, coordinator of IQSC, has been always there for us for any need. We thank for her constant support and encouragement. Thanks, Mr. Shamoresh Pramani, Department of Computer Science, for helping us to smoothly broadcast the webinar. Students and faculty of all science departments need separate mention for their wholehearted support and active participation. We extend our thanks to all the faculty members and non-teaching staff of this college for their constant support. Last but not the least, we would like to thank Dr. Anurag Roy, speaker of today's webinar, for delivering such nice and informative talk. By this today's webinar, we hope to see you all again in our next webinar. Take care and have a nice day. Thank you, Anurag. Thank you all. So we'll end our webinar here. And the feedback form is given. So kindly uh, feel free to fill up uh, the feedback form. Definitely we will work on it and come back to you with our webinar. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.